Hi everyone. Today we are going to do some more carnivore meal prep. I'll be making some uh, pulled chicken, kind of a Mexican flavor, bacon danishes, and I'm gonna try out Wendy's new high protein bread um, from Loving It On Keto. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you're new here, welcome. Please check out some of my other videos. The rest of you who keep coming back, welcome back and I hope you enjoy today's video. Okay, so I'm gonna get started now. I'm gonna start off with the pulled chicken. I've got a couple of chicken breasts here. They're skinless, boneless. I want to um, do kind of a pulled shredded chicken um, so that I can use it in other recipes. Um, I thought I had four chicken breasts. There's only two, um, but it is about a pound. So I'll be able to get at least a meal out of this. So let's get started. It's going into the Instant Pot. Um, I plan to do some Mexican type things with it. So I've got some homemade, I think this is homemade fajita seasoning. It's like, it smells like either taco or fajita, doesn't matter. They'll both work. Um, I always kind of like to make my own seasonings and I think I have this written down somewhere. So um, I'll, if I can find it, I'll share it. Uh, otherwise, just use your favorite taco seasoning or fajita seasoning. I think I'm going to probably use at least a tablespoon. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm not going to saute this or anything. I'm going to put chicken broth into the Instant Pot. You should always have a, a, probably a cup of liquid in there and also it helps the pulled chicken be more juicy. I'm going to put a little more in because I think this was this was only half full. I'm just going to put some water in. That should be about a cup and I'm going to uh, put my chicken breasts in there. They're big ones. I'm just laying them right in. Okay and I'm going to put in a nice heaping tablespoon. It's got cumin and all kinds of delicious smelling spices in there. So I'm going to get that started and then we'll talk about what else I'm making. So in the Instant Pot, this is going to be manual pressure. Um, about eight minutes, I think, should do it. Oh, that's way too many minutes. Okay, and then I'll let it natural release for 10 minutes. So we will just let that go and we'll talk about what else I'm making. Okay, so I'm going to also make a loaf of bread. Um, I was watching Loving It On Keto today and Wendy uh, made three bread recipes all in one, one episode of their show. Um, which I was pretty impressed with and uh, I've been I've been kind of fooling around with the uh, protein powder myself like the the now I've been uh, You wouldn't believe how many batches of cookies I've been working on this week I think I'm on failure number six, but I'm trying to do something really specific um, So it's okay. It's all good um, and I was going by this as well, and, and you know, the sweeteners are tricky and all this other stuff. So, but that's a whole other episode. Uh, today, we're just gonna talk about the bread. She was basing her breads on the formula that is on the back of the Now brand. I, it's so big, I can barely hang on to it. There's a recipe on the back that basically tells you um, that the powder can also be used in cooking recipes by mixing two tablespoons of powder with six tablespoons of water to equal two egg whites. That's what I've been basing my cookies on. That's what Wendy has been basing her high protein bread on. And so uh, she also uh, used some yogurt in the bread, which I believe 
I mean, she's she's got the technical knowledge of how the yeast works because I've never been much of a baker. So I believe uh, the enzymes in the yogurt activate with the yeast that I'm going to put in and, and that's where some magic happens and changes the texture of the bread. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I, what I'm going to do today is, is, I was going to do this recipe anyways, but I'm today I've decided after watching her video that I'm gonna use her recipe to make my bacon danishes, which uh, I know that sounds weird. That sounds weird. But they are really good. You're gonna love those. Um, and then I'll just make a regular loaf of bread. Uh, the recipe should be enough to do both. Um, a lot of times I end up with, you know, way too much batter, but, um, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to start by getting my magic bowl over here. Let's start by putting everything in here. I've got all the stuff here. And I'm gonna try this sourdough in there again too. We need um, three quarters of a cup of the egg white powder. And she did all the calculations for it based on what the back of this says, which is also what I was doing with my cookies. And one point that I want to make, which she also pointed out, is that if you're using a different brand, check the package, because it'll say what the measurement is for an egg white or two egg whites or, or whatever it says. And that's how you'd have to do your calculations. And two tablespoons of allulose. And then we're going to use some nutritional yeast, some active dry yeast, cream of tartar, and Redmond salt. And these are all things that, you know, a lot of us have been putting into our recipe all this time. Um, they seem to just add a little bit more to the recipe, to the egg white bread. So that was half a teaspoon cream of tartar, half a teaspoon of Redmond salt. Now she has this all written down. I'm going to link you to her video where she has posted uh, these recipes and they're written there so you can you know copy and paste them to your your word doc or whatever if you want to save them um, xanthan gum was half a teaspoon and then one teaspoon of the nutritional yeast and one teaspoon of the active dry yeast and I'm going to stir that a bit And then to this mix, um, two cups of water. So normally if you do the math on the back of the can, it would be two and a quarter or, or yeah, two and a quarter cups of water, um, I think. I can't remember now, I didn't write that part down. Um, but she cut back on the water because she uh, added yogurt, and which, which I thought was a, a great addition. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm gonna add the yogurt once it gets going. Okay, this is a two cup measure. Now the first time when I made the bread without egg whites, um, I mixed it and then when I took all the dough or batter out, I, I realized that a lot of it was stuck to the bottom of my mixing bowl. And um, uh, Wendy uh, had noticed that as well and so this is what this is what we're doing now. <laughs> we're we're gonna mix it up a little bit first before turning the mixer on. You can use a whisk. Uh, you can use your your beater head. I'm not even sure. Mine's there somewhere. I've been doing a lot of cooking and baking today, so my kitchen it is like a tornado hit it. But it's all good because hopefully I'll have things to show you as the week goes on. I'm gonna get that in here. Okay, so I'm going to let this mix. Um, it'll be a few minutes. Once it gets going, I'm going to add two tablespoons of fat-free 
Greek yogurt and uh, then let it, I'm just gonna let it go for a total of about uh, five minutes. timer for two minutes. As uh, good as it's going to get. Okay. All right, so I'm going to uh, pile some into this loaf pan. And I uh, decided I was gonna try a metal loaf pan too. I did, I sprayed it with the, uh, got some olive oil spray here. It's just from my local grocery store. Uh, and then I wiped it with a paper towel so there wasn't a lot of excess. So I'm going to just pile some in there um, and then save the rest for the bacon danishes. In the meantime, we still have our chicken going here. It's on, uh, it's counting down its pressure. It smells pretty good with those spices in there. It doesn't matter if it natural releases a bit longer because I know it's gonna take me a few more minutes to assemble this stuff here. I may end up putting more dough into this one, but I wanna make sure I've got enough for my danishes. So I'm just gonna set that aside for a moment. Get this one over here. Oh yeah, more than enough. So I like to use a tablespoon to just kind of put the, you know, mold the danish into the cup here and then make a little well. This Danish will not be suitable for protein sparing in any way, shape, or form because <laughs> it's going to have a custard layer and bacon. You could add cheese, um, but I figured with the custard that was probably enough cheese. Um, okay, so my custard. Uh, now, uh, about a week ago, I made a... Um, I made a blueberry custard danish and I used creme fraiche and a lot of people were saying oh I can't get creme fraiche what can I use instead so today I'm using sour cream and I will show you that sour cream works so it's one cup of sour cream and an egg yolk so I will just save that egg white for something else And you just basically mix it in. And when it bakes, it's going to cause it to set like a custard. It's very, it's so simple to do it this way. Okay. So I'm basically just going to dollop this custard in here. This is a savory Danish and it is good for carnivore days or keto days, but not protein sparing. Okay, now this is six slices of bacon and I just basically cut it into bite-sized pieces and fried it until it was pretty crisp. You want to render off most of the fat so that you don't end up with a greasy danish. If you haven't had a savory danish before, you'll like this. This is very good, perfect for carnivore. Um, and if you're, you know, real hardcore carnivore, um, I'm putting chives on this. I'm, you know, I think it's gonna make it look pretty. You don't have to. You can easily leave these out. These grow wild in my backyard, so I sort of feel like I want to use them too. Okay, so that's ready to go, and I'm going to pile the rest of this onto 
this loaf. We're gonna get a big loaf. Oops. I'm just gonna pile this up as high as I can with what's left in here. Oh, and I just remembered that somebody wanted me to show them the skewer trick. So I'm gonna grab some skewers and show you that. So the skewer trick is basically, if you stick skewers like this while you're baking, the, uh, the bread doesn't fall. I've tried it with the recipe with the egg whites, the raw egg whites, and it worked. So let's see what it does here. Um, but they were just wondering about placement, and that's all I've ever done. Um, so yeah, just don't trip and fall on it or anything, but. Uh, okay, so my oven is ready, and I'm going to put these in. I'm going to put, the bread is gonna go in for 40 minutes, but I, I don't know how long these will be. I'll, I'll just be checking them. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up and then we're gonna take the chicken out. All right, while we're waiting for those to bake, I'm going to take the chicken out. Should be ready now. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so I'm going to put it in here, in this bowl. I probably could have picked a smaller bowl. And I want the liquid too, because um, when you shred it with the liquid, you're gonna have a nice moist shredded chicken. So I just wanna grab some gloves. All right. So I'm gonna let that cool down for a couple of minutes. And while we're waiting for that to cool, I have mail. I have mail. I have mail. Got some mail. I went to the post office this afternoon. So this one is from Shreveport, Louisiana. Such a long ways. Thank you so much. I have no idea what this is. I wasn't expecting anything. Will you? It is very well packaged. Okay, let me see what we have here. Oh, she sent me a recipe for a, a, a cheese sauce. That's awesome. And I think what she's got here is she has some ideas of what I can do here. I don't wanna read this all because I don't know if there's anything personal in here. Um, yep, she's got some recipe suggestions. Uh, thank you for all you do. I've learned so much by watching your videos. I think you could use these recipes to make your own keto style. And I love doing that. Oh, she's lost 67 pounds on keto. That is awesome. Um, okay, so I'm glad I read this and did not say her name. I only said her first name because she's asked me not to say her name. So um, I'm sorry if I said your first name. I guess we could cut that out. Stand oh, well, let me see what's in the box. Probably is always a good idea to read the note before you say anything. Oh, look at these. These are gorgeous. Beautiful kitchen towels. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I love them. I love these colors. These are beautiful. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. These are gorgeous. I'm going to show them here. And I know, oh, I know how much it costs to ship to Canada. I, I just, I'm, sometimes I'm embarrassed when people send me things from so far away because I just, I know the shipping is pricey. Look at them though, they're gorgeous. 
Thank you. I, I love these blues. These are like, this blue is kind of one of, one of my colors that I love to have. Oh, look at, see, got a blue shirt on. I love them. Thank you so much. Uh, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you. These are beautiful. All right, I'm gonna put them aside so they don't get dirty right away. <laughs> Although I know that's what they're for, you know, but uh, thank you. Okay, so now our chicken. Got the chicken here, and um, I'm just gonna break it up into some bigger pieces, or so, sorry, some smaller pieces from this big piece. Now I know some people put these, they use their, their mixer or whatever to make the, the shredded meat, but I've only got two chicken breasts here, so I didn't really see myself making another, another beater dirty. <laughs> so I'm just gonna break it up as much as I can. I might have a little bit too much juice in here. I might pour some off. We'll just see where we get to when I'm done. And then I'll, smells amazing. Smell cumin and chili powder. All right, I'm gonna pour a little bit of juice off and then I can always pour some back in if I need it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, I do these things sometimes. Get one of those new towels, yeah. <laughs> no. I want to keep them pretty for as long as I can. But everyone knows they're gonna get used eventually, right? Yeah, so then you just uh, do a little bit of arm work and pull apart or shred the chicken. And it is pretty tender because it's been, you know, pressure cooked, so it's uh, fairly easy to do this. Now this you can have on a protein sparing day. You can use this uh, pulled chicken for lots of things. You can use it for a, uh, a pizza. It would be really good on a protein sparing pizza. You can you can make uh, wraps out of it. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. I probably will work on it a little bit more and get it shredded up a bit more. Um, but that's basically what you're looking for. And so um, I'm going to save this, uh, the rest of this juice for the recipe that I'm going to make tomorrow that uses this chicken. And oh, you know what I'm gonna do is I have a few chives left. I may as well throw those in there. Don't wanna waste that. So I'm gonna put this uh, away and then uh, I will see you in the next segment when we pull out the bacon danishes and the uh, bread. Okay, I'm going to take the bread out. It uh, baked for 40 minutes at 325 and now it's been resting for over 10 minutes. Oh, look at this. It's very nice. Very nice looking. I mean, the skewers look kind of funny. Take those out. Okay. I'm gonna, you know, it occurred to me after that the skewers might behave differently with this new bread. So this test may have been a waste and I'm going to try it without next time and, and just see how it looks. But this looks really good. Uh, I like the, uh, you know, the bounciness of that. Um, these are the bacon danishes. They were in, I took them out at 30 minutes. I didn't let them rest, anything like that. They looked perfect at 30 minutes. So uh, these have had actually quite a bit of time, 20 minutes to cool down while we waited for that. So I'm going to pull one out and uh, give it a try. I can already tell just by touching it um, that this this is different, this is gonna be a different texture, so I'm kind of excited to try it. It's actually still a bit warm, but um, it, it is coming away. So it, it came out nice and clean, it just was kind of sticking on the edges. And I just wanna see what the bottom looks like. The bottom is, is good. Um, it's it's soft. I mean, there was you know there's a lot of custard in here, so 
This will be a little more firm tomorrow, but I'm excited to try. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Pippi. That's so good, it's very rich. Oh, Pippi. Okay, I'll give you a little piece of bacon. That's not Pippi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Teddy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look at you with your one ear up, one ear down business. Sit. Oh, such a good doggy. yeah. Anyways. Back to this. This is really good. It's very rich with the um, sour cream custard. Um, if you have creme fraiche, use that. Um, I heard somebody said that they used cream cheese when they made the blueberry Danish. So basically anything like that. Probably Greek yogurt would work. Mm. I do like the, the creme fraiche, um, but the sour cream does work. I'm interested to see what this looks like tomorrow. You know, but the, the texture is really good. I'm very excited to try the bread because, of course, when I, you know, have a bite of this, all I taste is bacon and cream and, you know, it, which is wonderful. But I, but I want to really try, let me see if I can get a piece off by itself. It's definitely way softer. I'm excited to try that. <clears throat> so let me see how close we are to getting a, this loaf of bread out of here. It's kind of folded over the edges a bit. So this was very lightly sprayed, this pan. And then I wiped off any excess with a paper towel. <coughs> oh, you don't want the bread. So it may be tricky to get out, I'm not sure. I can see that it wants to come out. All the sides are away. I just don't want to pull it and then break the loaf or anything. So I just want to make sure I've loosened it everywhere I can. Pretty sure I'm being too impatient. I can feel it coming. It's coming. It feels different. Like the crust is, is really soft all over. There, it came out. You know what, I probably took it out too, um, too soon because it's still quite warm. Are you excited to try it too? You wanna see? There it is. It looks very pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let it sit for a minute before I cut it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try and cut it. It is still warm. Um, but I just, oh, I guess I'm just so impatient. If it doesn't, if I'm cutting it too soon, I'll know next time. Ooh. It has definitely got a moisture, a moisture, is that a word? Moisture texture. Um, holy smokes, is it ever uh, spongy and moist? And that's how I like the bread. I was always cutting back egg white protein powder before when I was making the bread. Um, the crust is soft. You, oh, and chewy too. You normally have to wait till the next day before the crust is soft and chewy. And I don't know if it ever got chewy either. Yeah, this is good. I have to work on not having air pockets. I mean, the air pockets are totally my fault. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm, let me cut a few more slices here. Yeah, the box, see I've got, I've got this big air pocket right in the bottom. But look at the bread texture. It's really nice. I'm going to go back and re-watch what Wendy did um, because maybe, maybe I can learn something there as far as uh, how this bread 
came out. Or I'll just go back to my silicone pans and see how they are. Maybe it has something to do, I don't know. I, I've done, like I, I'm certain I've done something odd there. So um, audience, maybe you guys can help me. But I am very excited about this, this bread. These ones on the other end look good. It's very moist and it smells like, it smells more like bread and cuts more like bread, like it's, I uh, love the crust. So I have high hopes for, you know, for using this. Um, yeah, this is nice. Okay, I'm gonna lay some here. As you can see what we made today. Okay. All right, so uh, just to recap, made the chicken, the shredded chicken. I'm going to use that in a recipe tomorrow um, that I will also film. It's a Mexican recipe and it will be, it'll be for keto, carnivore, carnivore especially. Um, so, and we made, we made the bread, we made Wendy's high protein bread with the yogurt. I am going to link her video below because this was my first time doing it, and um, I'm sure if you watch her video, you will probably learn quite a bit because she she made three loaves, all kind of different. Um, and then I made bacon danishes. Now, I have eaten one, and when I got to the middle, I just kind of felt like it probably could have used five minutes. Like everything about this danish is perfect, but right in the very middle, and, and this may change in the fridge. I, I'm not quite sure. It just seemed just a little bit runny in the middle and a little bit soft on the bottom in the middle. So five more minutes would have done it. So that would be 35 minutes for the bacon danishes. Um, they came out fairly nice, I think. Um, and, and I think all I'm gonna do, if, if this doesn't set overnight in the fridge, then I'll just microwave it and or something or, or bake it in my toaster oven a bit longer just to get that cook finished on it. So that's some prep for uh, the, the coming week that, um, that I'm having with carnivore. Um, these are things I can take to work and I'm excited to try the bread um, in the toaster and maybe on a grilled cheese sandwich or something. So thank you everybody and we will see you next time. Hi you guys, I just wanted to uh, update you. This is the very next day after these things were baked because um, sometimes they really change overnight. So they, both of these things were in the fridge. I packed the bread with paper towels to absorb some of the moisture. The danishes were perfect. Um, we had them the next day in an air fryer. My son stopped by and he had one. I never saw, I never saw anything disappear so fast. So, so that was good. Um, if you want to heat them up, the best thing is toaster oven, air fryer, or, or, or bake them for a few minutes ra rather than microwave. Okay, so the bread. I packed it in, in a baggie, like a big Ziploc bag with paper towels, which were quite damp actually. Um, this bread was very moist because of the, the yogurt um, and just the different formula. Um, it actually smells like sourdough today. I don't know why, it smells stronger today of sourdough, so that's good. I, I do find it almost a bit too moist for, for my liking though. So I think when I make it next time, um, I'm going to probably maybe add a little powder or cut back on the water. Um, the crust is, is great. This is the one, this, this is the loaf where I had the, the crust kind of falling off the bottom. Um, but it's nice and chewy. I, you know, like there's a lot of things I really like about um, this uh, Wendy's high protein bread. I mean, she's definitely on the right track here. Uh, but for myself, I like the, the bread to be not quite as moist as this turned out to be. Um, so I'm going to double check my, my measurements that I did. Maybe I messed up something there. 
Um, and if not, then then yeah, I'll just cut back on some of the water, and I think it'll be perfect for me. And I think I think the point is with these breads and and whatnot that that you find that formula that makes it right for you, the right moisture, the right consistency. Um, but this boy, this is really good. It's almost there. So um, yeah, just wanted to update you on that. On the formula that is on the back of this back of this oh my goodness do not put that in that does not go in <laughs> <laughs>